This is Gru number 30 from August 1987. And these are scans of Sergio's original artwork for said comic. Hi, I'm Darren. These are my hands. And today is going to be a really exciting episode because we get to look at Sergio's artwork, black and white, big, up close, and compare it to the published comic. Now, you might be wondering, where did I get copies of these scans? Well, there's a website called Heritage Auctions, and from time to time, some really neat stuff shows up on that site. And there's some pretty good quality scans sometimes. So as I was browsing, I thought this was fantastic stuff. I grabbed them, printed them out for educational purposes, of course, and I'm going to share them with you right now. Let's get going. Unfortunately, I do not have a scan of the cover, so we can't be looking at that today. And this two-page splash was also not part of the auction of original artwork. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to look at the original art for these two pages. But Everything else in the comic is here, and I think it's going to be super cool to look at it all. And this is what we are looking at. Sergio's original artwork. Sometimes if we look really closely at these scans, we can see some pencil work, some of those blue lines showing through. Of course, those blue lines don't make it into the comics themselves, but it's really neat to see occasionally where there's a sketch mark where we can see that Sergio's, you know, been working stuff out before he inks it over. And something that you're going to notice throughout the entire comic is the beauty of Sergio's penmanship, of his line particularly, the thinness, the thickness, the variation of his stroke within a particular panel or on a particular character. Like we can take a look at this guy's arm right here and see how the line is thin up at the top and how it gets wider and thicker down towards the bottom. Hair that's thin at one end and thick at the other. Thin, thin lines that show detail and, and thicker lines that outline speckles and dots and all. It's just wonderful. And the size of the art. Of course, Sergio draws, as most comic book artists used to do, at double the size of the printed page. So these scans that I have printed out aren't quite at the full size Sergio drew them at. But even the size that we do have them at, you know, maybe maybe one and a half times the size really just brings that detail into focus for us. And it just looks so great. I'm going to try to show at least one interesting detail per page. And on this first page, I thought it was really cool to look at this worker here. He's got a trowel full of mortar and it's it's dribbling down here into the credits at the bottom of the page. And Sergio actually drew right down at the bottom, this little splat, this splooch of mortar coming off of the dude's trowel here. It doesn't make it into the printed comic, but I thought that that was pretty cool to see there. You can see where the little cutouts for the associate editor, editorial director, and consulting editor are here. Every once in a while, you're just gonna be able to see that behind the scenes stuff that just looks so cool. All right, let's go to the next page. Actually, we're going to be skipping over the next page because this is that wonderful splash page. Of course, the comic that we are looking at today is Referto number two. This is the second comic with Referto in it. It tells this continuing story of how Gru and Referto got together we're really not going to be looking at the story at all today. We're going to be concentrating on this beautiful black and white artwork. So something that I want to point out right at the beginning, and this is something that you're going to be able to notice throughout this comic, and maybe you'll just start noticing it all the time when you're reading Gru, is the way that Sergio draws with an eye for color and for bringing focus to his characters, setting his 
main characters apart from the background. So when we look at a panel like this, we see there's so much going on in the background. There's soldiers, there's horses, there's people in the foreground, there's people in the background surrounding Gru and Referto. What's going to stop Gru and Referto from becoming lost in this background, in all of this art? Well, Sergio may rely on Tom's coloring to do a little bit of that. You see how Tom uses just a blue, a general blue background color to set apart Gru and Referto here. And, and he does add color to the soldiers in the foreground, but really Sergio is doing most of the work here. Check out how there's this like cloud of dust following Gru and Referto as they walk along. You see, take a look at his feet here, this cloud of dust behind them. It's that cloud of dust that allows Tom to not color immediately around Gru and Referto and let them pop right out of the drawing. This is Sergio thinking about color as he's drawing in black and white. And even if we just had black and white here, it's so easy to see how Referto pops out of the image. Our eye is drawn to Referto. That's our focus. That's what Sergio wants us to see. And amid all of this art, all of these background characters, Referto stands alone. Absolutely brilliant. And you'll notice that he does it all the time. Here we are looking at the color and we can see, okay, there's, there's no color right around Referto. There's no color right around Gru. Why is that? It's not because Tom just isn't coloring. It's because Sergio has, in his original artwork, left that space around his characters that he wants us to focus on so that we see them. Brilliant, brilliant work. And we see it down here as well around Referto, it's the use of that, that cloud of dust to separate our main character in the foreground from the background. And this is fun here too. We can see a faint outline of where Sergio has penciled in where he wants to have Stan letter the words. And we can actually see Stan has his, his guidelines there for getting his letters the right size. Such neat stuff to take a look at. And this is a great page. It's great because of the grid structure that's being used, the uniformity across the page. It blocks out these nine panels and there's not a lot of dialogue going on. In fact, the dialogue is basically the same in all the panels. Is this your dog? Is this your dog? And the gag is what Sergio is drawing in each of these mini vignettes. This is basically what it is. Each of these panels is a gag. So we get nine of them on the page. And of course, you know that I love this panel the best. Yeah, it's funny because Gru and Referto, they're, they're leaned over in this hole. They, they look like they're upside down. And so the speech balloon is upside down. Is this your dog? But what I love is the contrast here. Everything is assumed to be negative. It's all dark, except for where the light is coming through at the top of this mine. And the hatching is used to gradiate into that darkness and highlights on this miner down here on the side that's facing the hole and then darkness on the other side. And so the lines are actually inverse. They're negative lines. They're white against the black background. I think this kind of stuff is just absolutely beautiful. And we will see throughout this comic how Sergio uses this contrast to set things apart and to bring focus to different aspects of his artwork. Ah, oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. Okay, check this out. Going from nine panels on a page to just four. And man, this artwork, it's, it's huge. And we're seeing a great example of this contrast. Take a look up at the top here. In the background, it's solid black, except for the pikes of the soldier here. In the background, it's a black sky. Yes, there's, there's clouds here, but black is what's happening at the top of this panel as well. Same here, same here. These 
solid black areas also provide separation and set apart our focus on each of the panels. Even though these panels are huge, they're taking up like a third of the page. We get a little bit of, this is kind of like a negative space when we're talking about art and design. It's negative space, but with a dark color, with black, and it looks absolutely fantastic. It's really neat to see Sergio's art in black and white and at a slightly larger size just to change the way that we look at the art. And it just makes us see things differently. Without the color, it, it helps us to see these techniques that this master cartoonist uses to make his artwork stand out to help us to read his comics in ways that we don't even realize that he's doing that help us read his comics and, and see things. I love the spittle coming out of the queen's mouth. I love the sweat on the king's brow, the, the stubble on the soldier, the general, I don't know, is he a general? On his chin and, and the hatching used around here. Look at the thinness of that line compared to the thickness of this line here. Check out the gums in this dude's mouth and the whiskers on this guy's chin. You're going to hear me saying a lot today that this is gorgeous, that this is beautiful. And I know you agree with me. Again, as we take a look at this page here, we see the line weight that Sergio uses, how it varies from character to character, from background with very thin strokes to foreground like Taranto here with thick strokes and this fella here nice thick strokes we see the black negative space in the sky and the back of the trees here and really just focusing us in on these two guys Taranto and his henchmen at a pretty close-up shot here I love the black to the white and the speckle gradient that Sergio does here that's great I love the the hatching gradient in the trees, in the background, and Taranto. Like, we look at him in the colored printed version, and this is the best print job that you're going to get at the time. The colors are good. The paper is mediocre. The black printing is all right. But this is crisp. It is clean. And, and Taranto, he looks, well, he's ugly as all get out but he looks great. He's tall. He's lanky. You see Sergio's line is precise. He knows what he wants to do and he draws it so well. I don't know. When I look at this art compared to what's printed in the comic, man, I appreciate Sergio's skill even more. On this page, not only do we get some nice close-ups of Gru again, we get some grew featured in here and some refer to features again. But what I like seeing is the details that Sergio draws into the patterns on his fabrics and the textures on the fabrics. Take a look at this woman's dress with the, they're not polka dots, but those spots that start big at the bottom and they get smaller and smaller as they go up and they disappear. You know, it's kind of a referto thing going on with the big spots on referto's feet getting smaller up the legs and the big spots on the back getting smaller as we go to the tummy. And then how about, how about this lady here, the wrap that she's got around her and the cloth that she's got her, her baby swaddled in up there, the kind of diamond patterns as they start out bold and big at the bottom and, and get smaller and disappear as they go up. We see Sergio drawing these kind of patterns on all sorts of clothing that people wear down here at the bottom on this guy's armor. The texture in the patterning, like I look at this and I can tell that there's like some sort of weave going on here. Check out the flowers on this fellow's hat and, and the inlay on the sheath of this guy's sword. Never mentioning like the roots of the trees, these patterns, these textures that Sergio draws in on fabrics and on costumes and in nature. Beautiful. And, and it just shows up so nicely in these black and white original drawings. I don't want to say it, but Taranto, he almost looks beautiful in these drawings. He's such an ugly guy. 
but the drawings are great. This is a cute Gru with those little pupils for the eyes. You know, there's no whites that Tom has colored in in the printed version, and he just looks cute. Now, I understand that he's drawn it at a distance, and so you lose some of that detail, but every time that Sergio draws Gru just with pupils, ah, it's cute. I love it. We're seeing how Sergio uses black across the top as, as negative space to give our eyes some rest, but it also provides some definition. We can see how the trees here are lighter behind Gru, even though a lot of the background is dark and black, allowing Gru to be separated from these foreground characters, regardless of the color. Check out the fur on the back of this monkey. See the scratchy pen line work here all over the monkey? Looks great. It's something that you just don't see when the detail is shrunken down and it's colored in the comic, but it looks just great here in the original artwork. And as I was reading this the other day, I noticed this word right here, Scaramouche. And I thought to myself, Queen? Bohemian Rhapsody? Yeah, that's that word. Scaramouche, Scaramouche, can you do the Fandango? So I had to look up Scaramouche, and apparently Scaramouche is a stock character from Italian literature and drama. The Scaramouche is a boaster, but also a coward. So this very much is an insult. And it's a big word that Gru doesn't know, and neither do I. And so we do get a a payoff here. I am mad, and if I knew what that meant, Scaramouche, I would be even madder. And down at the bottom, I want the reward for returning your lost dog. Lost dog? I have no lost dog. You, you, you Scaramouche, you. But look at this Gru. He's absolutely huge, and the detail that we can see on him is fantastic. Look at, like, the folds in his jerkin. Look at his little pouch and his, his skull here, his Netsuka. He's big. He, he takes up the full panel. And really, he, he's not huge when we look at him in the comic. But at like one and a half times size or a little bit more, man alive, he is huge. And he's just beautiful to look at. Let's take a look at, at the backgrounds here, right? Sergio was drawing these black backgrounds again to allow us to focus on Gru. He's got like the cloud of dust around here as well so that when Tom's coloring, he doesn't have to color that and Gru can pop out. Take a look at the hatching back here and take a look at like, I guess maybe these were trees or something that he was drawing back here, but just how it's not simply black and then clouds and then white but there's that gradient on. Oh, it looks absolutely beautiful. Even like the edges of the clouds over here where we can see the puffs and the fluffs and the dimensionality of it all. It's fantastic. It looks like somebody drew a smiley face in here. And yeah, it showed up here. And we've got this, this really busy battle in the middle. And Sergio draws these clouds in the background, these action clouds of battle, so that when Tom is coloring, you know, we can see that sword standing out against the background of the cloud, and it doesn't have to be colored back there, and, and there can be other people around. He's just such a good artist. And here we've got another nine-panel page. Sergio is giving us a variety and oh, look at how his sword kind of sticks out of the panel here. And the thought balloons and word balloons are sticking out of the panel here. The sword sticks out of the panel here. This fellow's finger over here. Sergio doesn't feel the need to constrain himself rigorously into these nine panels. But it doesn't look like he's breaking rules when he allows things to overflow a little bit. This is the turning point in the comic where Gru realizes that he's been tricked. Taranto, where is Referto? He took him. And then we've got these one, two, three, four, five, not quite six panels, which are basically the same scene, the same composition, but it's absolutely brilliant when you see it in black and white. It's just Gru and this guy face to face, face to face, face to face closer, closer, and then away he runs. What a nice looking page. Interesting, this drawing of Gru here. It's kind of 
undefined what we should be seeing here as far as shoulders and jerkin goes. And Tom is just left to color that shoulder and that jerkin just somewhere. And yeah, it, it's kind of undefined here. It's a strange mouth. And on this page, we may not quite notice it in the background here, but we've got these clouds to allow Tom to color things, to allow the king who's being transported on his, oh, what's this thing called? Do they actually call it a couch? Maybe it's called a couch. To allow him to kind of be separate from the background with that empty space that the clouds provide. Look at this. This is beautiful, this silhouette panel with the dust being kicked up behind these soldiers and around the feet, the little speckles, the swooshes, the clouds with the hatching here just looks so good when we can see it in crisp, big detail. The dots used for shading around this fellow's eyes, the king's eyes there. Wow. And these birds in this final panel on this page, they really kind of give a little border here. And I love how these last couple birds here just pop up into frame here. And you know what? I don't know if if Sergio planned this or if Tom planned it, but the fact that the robes of the king are this pink color and then the birds are the same pink color, it just kind of flows really nicely. And another page with just five panels, nice big one in the middle. Man, the art looks so big. It, it changes, you know, from from one page to another, you know, you might have a lot of background detail in one, and then you've got a lot of space for your, <laughs> for your eyes to breathe, right? To just take in stuff without, I don't want to say the clutter, but the detail that Sergio draws so often, you know, we get a break from it. Like, take a look at this one here. It's just light. It's outlines. It's the edges. And we get a break from some of that darkness that Sergio has been using as negative space. And we just have white negative space, beautiful drawings of Taranto and Referto here up really close. Wow. What a cute doggo. This, this is the cute doggo here. When I think of very early Referto, I don't think of him as being drawn in a cute style, but man, with his tongue sticking out there and his cheeks all puffy, that's a cute dog. When we see him big like that, we can see the different line weights. Wow. It's really unobscured artwork. It's cartoony. We can see the weight of the lines. We can see the patterns in the fabric. And on Referto, we can see like the depth in this last panel, right? See how grooves in the background, but Sergio's using these clouds around him to allow Tom to not color around Gru and allow him to stand out even though he is in the background. So we've got way in the background Gru, in the midground we've got Taranto, we've got Referto's head right here up close in the foreground. And if we look closely, we can see some sketch lines around Referto's chin here. We've got early Referto eyes, that spot on the eye that, that wasn't always totally solid. You know, a little bit of dots around the edges, a little bit of hatching there. Gru has come to rescue Referto, or at least that's what Referto thinks. This, this panel with the wham in it. <laughs> Referto smiling as he's thrown upside down. He loves me, written upside down. Gru doing what Gru does best. What a great drawing of Gru there. Thick lines, thin lines. You can't help but notice all of these great techniques that Sergio is using now that we can see them in black and white on the page here. He's giving grew space. He's using that black negative space in the background to set things out. He's using hatching. He's using shading. Like, look how thin the line of Gru is as he is drawn in the background here, as opposed to when Gru is close up in the foreground. Like, look at the thickness of his nose in Taranto here compared to how thin the line is on Gru when, when he's further in the background. Would you draw like that? I know I wouldn't draw like that. I wouldn't even think to draw like that. But Sergio does it. Check out the, the whiskers on this guy here and the hairs on his wart. Ah, wonderful stuff. That's a beautiful wart. And how about this page? I want to focus on just this middle panel 
on this page here, mostly because of the angle that Sergio was drawing it at. We've got a lot of straight on shots for this three panels and for these two panels down here. But this middle panel, we're raised up into the trees, we're, we're above the head height of these guys, we're actually kind of looking back on an angle. It's kind of this three quarters perspective angle that we're looking down and back to see Taranto and his gang running up behind this army. We've got a branch tree limb here with this bearded lizard on it into the foreground. But the way that Sergio has composed this scene, man, like he's just such a natural when it comes to this kind of stuff. You know, he's not, maybe he's thinking about it all, but I, I have the feeling that this just, this just comes naturally to Sergio. He's left space behind the branch here and on the trail here and with this cloud of dust here so that when Tom is coloring it, we can get some color on this branch. We can get some color on this lizard, but we can also have this negative space down in the corner and everything is kind of drawn in this angle to draw our eyes up and away or to lead us down this way, depending on how we're looking at it. But the angle of the whole scene is up and back like this. It gives you that perspective. It gives you that three dimensional look to it. I've said it a million times. I'll say it a few more times before this episode is over. He's absolutely brilliant. And when you look at the black and white original drawings, you can't help but notice it. This is a fun page here. I love the desperation squiggles coming off the king's head here. I love, I love the sweat that's just splashing off of him as he yells at his wife, the queen, and pokes her in the nose. I love how she's yelling at the soldiers on this side. And then as the king yells at her, she whips her head around to look at the king. And Sergio draws her face on both sides of her head. And we've got these motion lines happening around her head. Look at how the king's pinky finger is sticking out as he's poking her in the nose. How could anybody draw a comic like this every month for 10 years straight with all the detail? Like here's one of those swords with all of those carved inlays. There's hatching, there's shading, there's whiskers, there's people everywhere. There's patterns on the guy's pants and on their belts and there's chainmail armor. You've got to get fast when you're doing it so good. We see a scroll here, but let's take a look at the scrolls on this next page. I loved looking at the scrolls that Sergio drew when I was a kid reading Gru, and, and I still do, but particularly the thickness and the shading that he puts into them. These aren't paper scrolls. These are, are thick, velvety scrolls made of, of some sort of fabric or, or leather or some sort of hide. Look at how there's thickness around the corners here. Ah. Oh, Wonderful stuff. You know, maybe this one's made a bit more of paper than this one here. Sergio's scrolls are worth reading Gru comics for. Arf, 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 arf. Meow. Arf. <laughs> and it's funny stuff, too. Again, the darkness at the, at the back of the panels in the trees here, especially. Oh, well, not especially, but... In a different kind of way, the trees here, the branches that go up and they get lost in the darkness and the trunks that go up and get lost in the darkness that help divide the panels, that bring balance between the lightness, between the relatively non-busy drawings, for example, at the bottom of this panel. And then we've got the heaviness, the solidity of the black at the top. I love all the little skulls on this army's armor. Now we come to one of my favorite panels in all of Gru comics. This one right down here. Referto, Gru, love. Ah, oh, I love this drawing. This is the essence of Gru and Referto right here. 
One person is saying, get lost, kicking the doggo away. There they are. They're meant to be together. This up here is something that I wanted to, to point out. In the finished comic, we've just got one of these funny, weird, Gru line mouths. But when we look at the original sketch work, we can see that Sergio had something drawn here, and then he had to use some sort of liquid paper or something and, and redraw it a second time just to get it right. I think that we think that Sergio draws perfectly the first time all the time. Well, maybe not the first time all the time. Here's one example in this comic where Sergio had to draw something twice to get it right. And how about this Gru down here? That's a really nice looking Gru. See, he's part of the background here. He's small, and the printing of the comic just doesn't allow for us to see him that much. The color doesn't help that much either. But in this original drawing, man, he looks sad. We feel sympathy for him. It's a great drawing of Gru. Who says there's no range of emotion and depth of character in these comics? Who says it's just the same cheese dip joke over and over again? This is fine art. And you know what? It really is. Like, look at this panel here. Look at these trees. Look at Gru. Look at Roberto being taken away and the tear rolling down his eyes. I love how this page, it's almost one of those nine panel pages. And I love how the middle panel here is an inverted silhouette type panel. It's mostly black with just the silhouettes of the characters inverted. It just adds that balance to the whole page, right? We've got light around the outside, dark in the middle. This really is fine art. It's beautiful. Don't you agree that there's something about Sergio's original artwork that in some way is better than what we got in the comics? Man, look at Taranto's spittle flying out of his mouth there. And Gru just looks awesome there. Like, look at the detail on the Walkman. I don't need to be telling you what to look for. You can see that it all looks great. Like, look at this art here. Again, maybe my, my second favorite Gru panel because it's so similar to this panel here, right? Referto, Gru. Referto again, Gru again. I like Referto's smiley teeth here as opposed to his fangs in this one. Gru's also got a, a little bit of a funny underbite going on here. But let's take a look at this page here and... We would say, this is fine art. Like, look at this tree and these plants. Look at the detail and the crowds. And look at, like, the symmetry between this painted dog and the kilt, the pants, the shorts that, that this guy is wearing here. Look at the darkness and the way that Sergio draws plain in the background, but busy and allows things to be separated. How we have busy here and not busy at the front, and it guides our eyes in the direction that Taranto and his gang are running. And as much as I love Tom, you know that I love Tom's coloring work, but sometimes 1980s comic color printing just made comics worse. Like, there's no comparison between this page here and this page here. Don't you agree? If you disagree, please let me know, but man... And here we have the last page. We've got a crowd taking up the top half of the page. But the way that Sergio draws, he's left enough space and clouds around Taranto so that when Tom colors, we see Taranto set apart. And he colors it really so well so that we see the general pressing him from one side and the king pressing from the other side. Then as we move down through the monotone crowd, Sergio has drawn Gru in a way that he is separated from the background, and we can see him. The focus is on Gru as we get to the middle of the page. And then again, at the bottom, he's drawn things in such a way that Roberto and this other pooch can be focused on at the bottom of the page. 
He's provided space around the moral and the, the end scrolls. The scrolls are beautiful. And there's a balance between the light and the dark in how he uses that black background to set apart the white block letters of moral and the end. This is a beautiful drawing. Gru, look at him. He is beautiful here, except his back foot is not beautiful. Take a close look at how Sergio is drawing those toes and the heel, and we see that, yeah, that's just a poorly drawn foot when it comes down to it. And that's how it shows up in the comic as well. But if that's the only thing that we're really picking on in this comic, wow, it is really just a thing to behold when we look at this original artwork. And it's just so cool when this stuff shows up online and we get a chance to take a look at it. I'm sure that this sort of thing is something that you've enjoyed looking at just as much as I have. Please let me know what your favorite page was, what your favorite drawing of Sergio was, if things have stood out to you as we've looked at this art that have never really stood out to you before. I've got more great videos like this. Click right up here right now to watch this video next. Please make sure that you're subscribed and do all the other good things by clicking over here. And if you're one of those weirdos who would prefer to read Gru in black and white all the time, the algorithm thinks you should watch this video next. Take care, everyone.